Hey YouTube, Common Collector here, and today I'm bringing you my brand new Ad Emancipator deck profile, the full power version. Now, I did a deck profile on Ad Emancipators on a budget with Magnet Warriors, so I will also be doing probably a pure Ad Emancipator build on a budget uh, besides that. So if you guys are interested in that, please hit the subscribe button, or just in general, if you guys are interested in more of my meta and budget deck profiles, please consider hitting that subscribe button. But anyways, let's get on into the deck profile. So pretty standard. I am obviously playing three copies of Researcher since this is the full budget version. But basically what Researcher does along with like all the other Adamansa people is that it um, once per turn you can reveal the top five cards of your deck and you get to special summon one non-tuner rock monster from the five cards that you reveal. So the only difference between the three tuner monsters is how they're summoned. So you have Researcher, who summons herself as long as you have a rock on the field. And then you have Seeker, who special summons herself as long as you have an Ad Emancipator on the field. And then you have three copies of Analyzer. Um, this special summons itself as long as your opponent has a monster and you control no monsters. So this one's a little bit harder to get out. It's sort of like a cyber dragon for the deck, but it is still useful. And we run a lot of level fours in the deck, which is very important because you have level eight plays, level eight synchro plays, rank four plays, as well as discarding a level four for Doki Doki just to get this card out anyways. Um, so overall, this card is really good still at three. Uh, sometimes I'll side it out uh, and put it at two. Um, when I go into siding, but overall, these cards are just really, really good at three copies of each. So then for our last Ad Emancipator card, we are playing three copies of Ad Emancipator Crystal Dragite. So I'm not playing any of the other crystals, but I do really like this card at three. So what this card does is that if it's special summoned off of the effect of one of the Ad Emancipator cards, so just uh, off an Ad Emancipator card, so you can use the spell as well, then you are allowed to draw one card. So you get some really serious advantage off of that. It's just nice to go into more extenders. And also, if you combo Dragite along with the spell, you can place a certain card on the top of your deck with the spell and then just draw it right away with Dragite. So it's just a really sick combo. And then he helps to recycle your Water Synchro Monster. Going on, I am playing a very small of the Go 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 engine, so I'm not playing like the full Go Go Go, Ga Ga Ga, Zuba Ba, all that stuff. Like, for one, I don't want to be tongue twisted when I'm doing a duel, and overall, I think that like you don't need to play the full engine. This deck can still really slap out some good crispy boys, uh, as long as you just like play with this really tiny, tight, consistent engine. So that's why I'm playing a lot of three ofs. But anyways, the Go 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 Gygus, when it's in your graveyard, if you special summon a Go 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 monster, it can special summon itself from the graveyard. So again, with the Analyzer, it's just really easy to set up plays to get Analyzer onto the field with Doki Doki. And so you just discard an Earth level 4 monster and you get the Analyzer anyways. And um, yeah, so you just set up your graveyard with Gigas, or you have the Dodo Do Go 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 Glove. So th what this card does is that if it's in your graveyard... When you control a Go 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 monster, you can special summon it. The only downside to this card is that if you use this card's effect to summon it to the field, you lose your battle phase for the turn. But overall, that's not too important as long as we're going first and setting up our big oppressive board that our opponents can't get over. The battle phase really doesn't matter. Um, and then the downside to this card is that after you special summon it by that effect, it gets banished. But overall, the Gygus can really recycle itself as many times as you need to. These duels don't grind for too long, but overall, like, sometimes, like, I don't know, I was just at Locals this last weekend, now that Locals have been slowly opening back up, and I had a couple grind duels where, you know, things went on for a handful of turns, so overall, having the Gigas, and I actually just added this engine just a few days ago after Locals, so... I've really been liking it in there, though. So now going on with three Block Dragon. Now, like, there's a few people who have been playing this at, like, two or one, um, but I just still think Block Dragon needs to be played at three because you can attach one with Union Carrier and um, send that to Grave and then get off the search effect, and then you can just pop one onto the field, which means that that uh, helps with destruction effects and whatnot. So I just really like playing the Block Dragon at three. But what this card does is it can special summon itself from the hand or graveyard by banishing rock monsters from the hand or graveyard. So 
overall, it's just like, um, sorry, not, not rocks, uh, it has to banish three earth monsters, but overall this card is just super duper good and his special summoning effect a lot of people forget is not once per turn so if you summon this and then link it away or something then you can still summon it back as long as you have more of those earth monsters chilling in your graveyard to summon it and then also while it's on the field your rock monsters can't be destroyed except by battle so that just really really helps also we play avermax in the extra deck which means that if you get this on the field uh, Avermax is going to protect you from battle stuff, and then Block Dragon makes it so that your monsters can only be destroyed by battle, which means that your opponents just, like, can't destroy any of your stuff. They have to go with, like, non-destruction effects, so uh, it's just really, really powerful. Also, lastly, what Block Dragon does is that when he's sent to the graveyard, he gives you up to three rock monsters whose uh, total levels equal eight, so a lot of the time I will search a Gigantes, along with the two, um, the Analyzer and the, sorry, the Seeker and the Researcher, just because those are level twos, so two, two, and four equals eight, and that's just like the best searcher that you can get off of that, just to keep extending your plays, as long as you haven't used their special summoning effects yet. Then going on, we were playing three copies of Nibiru. Nibiru in the main deck is like really not that crazy. A lot of people have been playing this, and it's just a really nice card to keep in the deck. Also, I mean, it's, it's a rock, so it's, it's still pretty synergistic with the deck. Um, overall, I just really like having it in here. And it's just, it's, it's a really easy card to side out if you're playing up against like, you know, Matt, I played against Magical Muskets this last weekend and stuff and it really didn't do anything. So I just sided it out in game two and it's really not that big of a deal. But you also don't want to get surprised and your opponent is playing a big combo heavy deck and then you don't have this in your hand. Going on, we were playing three copies of Doki Doki. Now, I've already kind of explained this card, but uh, Doki Doki is just really, really good in this deck. It um, basically just really ups the consistency. He's one of your best normal summons in the deck, and uh, also he's searchable off of your tuner monsters. So while he's on the field, once per turn, you can discard a rock monster and then special summon another rock monster from your deck whose, um, attribute and or whose attribute and level is the same as that discarded monster. So you can actually special summon off a monster with the same name. It doesn't specify that it has to have a different name. So there have been times where I've discarded an analyzer to get an analyzer on the field and, you know, ba basically whatever you need. And again, it just helps set up your graveyard for those do 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 go 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 plays. If you um, summon Doki Doki and you have go 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 gigas in your hand you discard the gigas special summon the um the glove and then you get to summon the gigas back from the graveyard because it was in your graveyard and it saw you special summon a monster so overall that combo just works super super nice so doki doki need to play it at three i've seen people dropping it to two and that is a, a huge mistake then we are playing three copies of the kawaki meru guardian what Kawaki Meru Guardian does while he's on the field is that if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can just tribute him to negate it. So he does help defend you against Nibiru if your opponent plays Nibiru against you. So he's really nice to just search off and keep on the field if possible. And the only thing is that you have to reveal a rock monster in your hand uh, during the end phase of your turn or else he gets destroyed, which uh, isn't really too big of a deal because this is a rock monster mash deck. We are playing... All but four cards in the main deck are all rock monsters, basically, uh, or I guess, and then a few of the mo other monsters are not rocks, but in general, this deck plays so many rocks, you're probably going to end up with one in your hand anyways. Then I like playing two copies of the Gigantes. People like to uh, drop this down to one, but I like playing it at two. I used to play it at three, even, because, um, you know, you can summon more than one per turn, and it's just like, it's uh, easy to go into a rank four play or extend into your level six or eight synchros. Then I'm playing the one copy of Kawaki Miro Overlord, or sorry, Overload. Um, this is a pretty easy side deck out card. In general, it's still really nice though. Uh, if your opponent would summon a monster, you can tribute this to negate it. So it's similar to the Kawaki Miro Guardian. Together, these two are like a solemn strike, but it's just a free, uh, yeah, basically a free solemn strike on the field. And I mean, overall, he's just really, really nice to have. The one Tackle Crusader, if you detach this from an XZ material or just when it's sent to the graveyard, you get to either pop a Spell or Trap back to the hand, or you can uh, target one of your opponent's face-up monsters and put it face down. 
Then lastly, we were playing, of course, playing the Mecha Phantom Beast O-Line and the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. We're going to be playing these two cards while we still have, like, Union Carrier and Halka Fibrax. But I am working on a build for how this will work after those cards get touched on the ban list. If this card gets banned or Union Carrier gets banned, whatever's going to be happening, I'm not sure. Then we are playing, of course, three Adamant's Pater Signs. This card just pairs really, really nicely with your Adamant's Pater Crystal Dragite and really any other Adamancipator or Rock Monster you have to put onto the field. So these are not a hard once per turn or anything. So if you draw into multiples of them, great, you have like extra extenders. And then it can, if you summon an Adamancipator card off of this with the Monster Reborn effect, then you get to put a Rock Monster on the top of your deck, which is super, super nice. And then lastly, just a fourth copy of Monster Reborn, basically. But that's going to do it for the full main deck. Now we're going to go on to the extra deck. For the extra, I'm playing it pretty standard. This is like the tightest extra deck I may have ever made. Uh, there's a little bit of variation that I would like to include, but uh, we're playing the one copy of Dragite and one Raptite. Unfortunately, did not have enough room in the main deck uh, or the extra deck to play the Leonite Crystal or the um, Crist or the Leonite Synchro, but in general, I like playing these two. Um, you go into Raptite usually first. What this card does is it has basically the same effect as like Researcher, Seeker, and Analyzer. Let's you special summon a monster, uh, a, a rock monster from your hand out of the top five that you reveal, and then you just put the rest back to the bottom of your deck in any order. But the big difference with this is that it can let you special summon any rock monster, which means you can special summon off the tuners, which the tuners do not let you special summon off more tuners to extend. So this card, you know, you go into it and then you just keep extending. And then if you get a level 2 tuner, then you can just send these to go into your drag guide anyways. But also while this card is on the field, if you have a wind monster in your graveyard, you can banish one card in your opponent's graveyard on your opponent's turn, which it is possible. We do play more wind monsters in the extra deck, so you will get a wind in the graveyard to be able to use the Raptite's quick effect. Then with this card, um, once per turn, you're able to pick up the top five cards of your deck. And then for every rock monster that you reveal, you can pop cards back to your opponent's hand, which is just absolutely nuts. Like, this drag guy is just so good. Um, like, you can clear a board. I was playing up against uh, a trap trick board, or a trap trick deck this last weekend at Locals, and for some reason... This card wasn't a target of any of the traps, and I was just able to pop all of them back to the hand, which was just nuts, and then I plowed in for all the rest of the damage that I needed. And then also, while this card is on the field, it can negate spell and traps on your opponent's turn, which is also super, super nice, as long as you have your water monster in the graveyard, your dragite, or like Christron Halka Fabrax, who is also a water monster. Then going on, we are playing one Borload Savage Dragon, a uh, great Omni Negate as well as Herald of the Arclight. When this card's on the field, it's another Omni Negate, and then also any monster that is sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished instead, so this card is just super nice to have on the field. It's just a nice Floodgate and an Omni Negate. Then we are playing the one Martial Metal Marcher, who helps you to go into Herald of the Arclight, along with Christron Halka Fibrax, Link Cross, Union Carrier, and Link Spider. These four cards just work in such great synergy together. Uh, they're a little bit trolly, and it's really not very fair for your opponent, but hey, like these cards are in the game, so you kind of have to play them. Then going on, we are playing the IP Mascarena, uh, Nightmare Cerberus, and then Mech Knight Crusadia Avramax, who I've already explained earlier, but these two cards together work so good. As long as you get your Union Carrier into this zone here and then summon your IP Mask Arena under it, or you get your Nightmare Cerberus pointed there and then get out your IP Mask Arena. Uh, one of these ways that this combo works, and then on your opponent's turn, depending on how you feel, if you need your Appaloosa or if you need your Avermax to have the destruction protection that you get from IP Mask Arena. That is sort of the way that you do it. Uh, I usually go with the Mech Knight Avermax, actually, because you usually have enough negates on the board that you don't need Appaloosa that badly. Uh, if your opponent plays through all of your other negates and stuff, as long as you get out Avermax with all of the destruction protection, uh, you know, he can't be targeted. He protects yourself from battle. And then you get out the Block Dragon, who also protects from other destruction effects, 
and then Avramax can't be destroyed by card effects, you get that lock onto the board and your opponent is in a really tough spot. So either way, you can take these two to go into Appaloosa with 1600 or Avramax. Uh, either way, it just works. So again, the one Appaloosa right there. And then for your last two X, uh, cards are the XZs, the Gallic Granite, and Abyss Dweller. So um, pretty tight. Again, like, like I said, this deck really does not have too much room to maneuver. These are the 15 best cards that I could kind of come up with. But this is just how I like the extra deck. And there's really not much I would change about it. The only other two cards that I would like to have in here would be like Naturia Beast, which I think I will put in my next build after the ban list. And then um, the Leonite. But Leonite is really not that important. Going on in then for siding, we are of course playing three copies of Infinite Impermanence. This card is just still really, really good right now. And it's uh, decently cheap at the moment. Um, if you know, you need to get your hands on this anyways if you're trying to play competitively. And then along with that, like the next card that is super good competitively right now is evenly matched. Um, and then of course, Dark Ruler No More. These th uh, these nine cards are in here for sort of like the mirror match. Uh, these are the cards that I would side out certain cards to put in against another Ad Emancipator deck. So I like each of those cards for sure in the deck. Those nine need to be in there. And then three copies of DD Crow in case you're playing up against Eldlich or anything. And I'm not playing Ash Blossom in this deck or Called by the Grave um, in the main deck or side deck just because uh, I don't think that they really pack enough punch right now. You can get out enough negates and you have enough extenders to push through a good handful of hand traps so you really don't need the Called by the Grave. And ashing your opponent's stuff nowadays really just doesn't do enough either. So I think DD Crow along with like having infinite impermanence in the side deck anyways is good enough. Then in case you were playing up against Eldlich or anything like Mystic Mine, you obviously have to have at least two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. And then my last card that I switch out from the main deck is Barrier Statue of the Draught. If your opponent does not special summon very much from the extra deck, it is a really easy target to switch with your, um, trying to find it, the Union Carrier target, the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. You just swap these cards out, and then you just make it so that your opponent can't summon out any monsters except for Earths. So overall, guys, that is going to do it for my main deck, side deck, and extra deck. If you guys want to see a combo video on this, I would be more than happy to do this. Along with if there's any other builds of this deck that you guys would like to see, just let me know. But overall, that is going to be it for my Ad Emancipator deck profile. Thank you very much for watching. Common Collector out.